Hi everyone, today I wanted to share with you guys some of the apps that I keep on my iPad Pro. Uh, so some of the apps that make this product worth it. Uh, I've had it for about two-ish years now. Uh, I think it's the 2019 Pro model, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's definitely not the newer ones with the M1, uh, but I find that I don't really need to, to upgrade. So I'm still rocking this one. Uh, this is the smaller model. This video is really to focus on the apps that I use. So I split it into three main categories. The first one being productivity apps and then uh, creativity apps. And uh, of course, I'll touch on entertainment as well. Uh, this won't be the main focus, however, because uh, it's not uh, what I mostly use my iPad for. But I definitely wanted to, to uh, touch on it because uh, this thing is a beast. So let's start with productivity. Of course, uh, we can talk about productivity apps without talking about the king of them all, Notion. And I've talked about in the past, Notion is an app that I use every single day. And I would say that it's better on the computer, but it is also definitely great on the iPad. So Notion, for those who don't know what it is, uh, it's a bit hard to describe exactly what it is. Uh, some people use it as like a wiki. Uh, some people use it for um, project management, which is mostly what I use it for. But the really cool thing about Notion is that you can really do whatever it is that you want to do with it. You can customize it as much as you want. Uh, you can really make it your own. And there are tons of communities out there of uh, people that are building really cool dashboards. Uh, it's a really, really cool app. And I use it a ton every single day. I personally like to manage all my personal projects and work projects kind of together. Uh, and work projects, I mean, my daily job, which is a, well, I work as a web designer. Um, so I use it a lot for managing those projects on um, on my end because we do have like a dedicated project management uh, tool within the company But I like to have everything at the same place and I use a lot of templates to help me uh, When I'm doing the designs to make sure that I don't forget anything um, So notion is really really cool for that you can really make tons of templates and it makes it a lot easier uh, when you're starting a new project, you can just have everything in there. And I made a separate uh, separate kind of area for uh, all of this uh, YouTube thing. Because uh, at the beginning, for me, it was more something I just wanted to try out, uh, see how it goes. And I actually really, really, really enjoy it. And it's something I'd like to do a lot more of. And um, well, part of that means that <laughs> I'm now kind of thinking a bit further in the future. And so I have like a ton of ideas that are lined up. Uh, I'm also starting to work on a website where I can uh, host blog posts and stuff like that. I'm working on two Instagram pages as well to kind of build small communities in there. And um, so with all of this, I kind of wanted to have its own uh, area so that I wouldn't uh, mix it up with everything else. And on the kind of personal side, I use it a lot as like a, kind of like a second brain. Uh, so I have a ton of applications that link, uh, well, sync to Notion. And um, I basically store a ton of information in there. Every time I find something to be interesting, I'll highlight it and through other apps, it will be sent to Notion uh, where I can reuse that information later on if I ever need to. Um, for work, I also like to uh, prepare myself for meetings. Uh, I like to review my meeting notes in Notion as well. So uh, when we have later on another meeting and uh, maybe we need to touch on what we spoke in the last ones, I can refer back to them. Uh, yeah, it's a really, 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 really cool app. Um, the only area that I think Notion is not great is for task management. So your to-dos. Uh, it's really, really good for project management, but for the daily to-dos, uh, it just sucks. I haven't found a way to make it work for me. I've seen a lot of people uh, that built like systems that kind of worked, but I just used to do this instead. I find it's a lot better. I have talked about these two apps in a video that I made not that long ago on five uh, productivity apps that I use on my phone mainly. But Todoist is also an app that's really, really, really good on iPad. I really like the view that you have. And Todoist is like packed with features. It's the reason why I use that one instead of uh, like Things 3, which I also come back to every now and then. But Todoist has more features that I really like. Um, I really enjoy sending priorities. Uh, and the main main thing is that to do is syncs with a ton of other apps So it makes it a lot easier to use um, You can also use it on any device that you have 
uh, Things 3 is only for iOS devices, well iOS, uh, the Apple ecosystem, sorry. So you can have it on your Mac, on your iPad, on your phone. Uh, it's also really expensive, I think, uh, for the entire set of apps, because you have to purchase an app on uh, Mac, on iPad, and on your phone. I think that's around like $250-ish. Uh, whereas uh, Todoist, you can use it for free. Um, you can use most of it, I would say, for free. Um, you probably have to pay if you're using it with like a team, but I don't, so I don't have to pay for it. And yeah, Todoist allows you to schedule your tasks really well. I also like that you can postpone your task to either tomorrow, either weekend, or even next week. You can have recurring tasks, which is really nice. And another cool thing is that you can have as many subtasks as you want, and you can nest subtasks within subtasks. Um, so what I do is I have like my main project, uh, let's say a, a YouTube video. Uh, I'll have like, uh, well, I have the main video. So the first task would be video and then I have all of the subtasks. So things like the research, writing the scripts, filming, uh, the editing, uh, shooting B-roll, all of that. And then within these tasks, I might add more subtasks, uh, especially for B-roll. I found that it's super helpful to list all of the shots I want to do uh, in there. And then I can even have that opened on my Apple Watch when I'm uh, doing the shots. Uh, so that way I make sure that I won't forget anything. So I found it to be really, really useful and I use it every single day. Uh, another feature that I really like from them is that you can send your emails directly to Todoist. If uh, let's say you have action, uh, action items within those emails, you can just send them to Todoist and it'll be added to your Todoist inbox, which is really nice. Uh, the only issue I had with that is that I use a lot of different emails for different things. So I have my personal email, I have an email for this uh, channel, uh, which is also the email that my clients use when I'm doing freelance. And I also uh, have a work email, of course, and I get to do's uh, within all of these emails. Uh, and I didn't find a new way to have a single Todoist account linked to all of these emails, but that's where the next app comes in. So my uh, email app of choice is Spark, and I use it on every single one of my devices. Uh, it's a really, really cool app. It's basically an email client, and it has a lot of features, of course, uh, but one of my favorite ones is that you can uh, set up your Todoist account within the app, and you can have uh, all of your emails send to-dos directly to that one single Todoist account, which is super cool. Uh, you can add tons and tons of other applications if you want to. I also added uh, Pocket, which is the app that I use to read articles and stuff like that. So whenever I get an interesting email, um, I can send it to there if I want to read it later. I'm a huge fan of uh, having Inbox Zero, so keeping my inbox completely empty. And uh, Spark is really useful for that, especially since, like I said, I have a lot of different emails. So they're all in the same spot and I can organize all of them through this one same app, which is super nice. And I don't know why, but having a clear inbox, it, it just feels, uh, it feels nice. <laughs> you know, everything you have to get done, uh, you can refer back to the emails that you'd like to read later on and stuff like that. So I think it's a really cool app and uh, it has, a, a lot, of course, a lot of other nice features um, It has a smart inbox and smart notifications. So that means that I won't get notifications for things like a uh, newsletter or spam and stuff like that. I only get um, the notifications for emails that are, uh, well, like that are sent directly to me rather than like a newsletter and stuff like that. And the inbox is kind of the same way. So you have like your main inbox uh, with more like important emails and then you'll have a, a newsletter inbox and uh, all of that. So it's super nice uh, for that as well. You can also schedule emails, uh, which is something I think you can do with just Gmail, um, but it's still nice to have. And one of the really, really, really cool features that it also has is um, you can have reminders to follow up your emails. So you could say like, um, let's say you send an email to someone and you could say, remind me like in two days to check back in or something. And if they haven't sent you an email, well, Spark will um, notify you that it's now been two days, so you might want to follow up on that email. It's it's not something that's automatic, you just have to set it up, um, but it's a really, really nice feature. And when I bought this uh, iPad, I was still in school, and I thought it would be a super, super good uh, device for note-taking when I was in class, and it is, and I tried a ton of apps uh, out there for note-taking. Um, 
I really like Notability for um, like jotting on down uh, notes on PDFs when I was following the courses. Um, but now I just use the Apple Notes. Um, like I said, there are a lot of other apps out there, but for the iPad, I really, really wanted to use the Apple Pen. I didn't want to carry around the keyboard. Um, and there's just no apps out there that are as good as the Apple's uh, Notes app for the pen. Uh, when your iPad is closed, you can just tap the pen on it and it will open up a new document for you. Uh, so it's super useful. Like when I'm in meetings and stuff, I'll just write down notes there and then I'll review them later on in uh, Notion. When it comes to longer um, writing, so let's say I'm writing a script for a video or I'm writing a blog post or something like that, I'll do that all in Notion and it won't be on my iPad. Uh, it'll be on my computer. My iPad is more for taking notes when it comes uh, to writing. I've also talked a lot about time blocking. I'm a huge fan of it, of course. And uh, my app of choice uh, for my calendar is Fantastica. The main reason, again, is because it's packed with uh, features. It can sync with a ton of other apps. Uh, one of them being, of course, Todoist. <laughs> so uh, Fantastica actually allows you to sort of manage to-dos within the app, but I like to do this more, so I sync them together. And it's a really cool app. It has a lot of cool features. Uh, the design is nice as well. Uh, one of the things that I like is you can, um, let's say you're trying to schedule a meeting, you could send a link to all of the people that are supposed to be within that meeting and uh, you can have them vote on when would be the best for them. Uh, if someone wants to book a meeting with you, you can send them a link and they'll be able to choose a block where you are free, which is also nice. I also really like that it has natural language uh, built into the app. So when you're adding a new event, you could say like uh, dinner with Laurie at X restaurant uh, from seven to 9 p.m. or something. And Fantastica will understand that. It will create an event. Um, it will understand that you're doing this with uh, X person at whatever restaurant from seven to nine, which is uh, super nice. So it makes adding events a lot easier. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool um, calendar app. Of course you could use whatever calendar apps you want. Uh, they, they have the main features, all of them, but I found Fantastica to be really nice especially because it syncs with all of these other apps that I use. And now creativity, of course, the iPad Pro is a really, really great tool for all of us creatives. Um, so when I was in design school, I used it a ton. Uh, now that I work as a web designer, I use it still quite a lot to plan out um, websites to do like sketches and stuff like that. And there are a ton of really cool apps, but there are three that I use almost every day, if not like maybe at least on a weekly basis. And the first one is of course Procreate, which is the best app out there for uh, drawing, uh, painting or whatever, if you want, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Procreate with the uh, Apple Pencil is absolutely great. This is probably the only app that if you're gonna be using it a ton, I would say the iPad Pro is worth, uh, worth it instead of like a regular iPad or an iPad Air um, because it has more RAM, more memory, you can have a lot more layers when you're drawing. And I love drawing. It's one of the apps that I use the most on my iPad. Uh, it's a really, really, really cool app. You can find uh, tons of brushes out there. Uh, at some point, I wanted to be a tattoo artist when I was studying graphic design. I've always uh, found tattoos to be really interesting. And I picked up a few brushes, a few brushes on um, Procreate that are kind of like uh, tattoo machines. So I've been drawing a lot of uh, tattoo designs for fun. And it's a really, really cool app to use. Uh, you should definitely try it out if you have an iPad. It's And uh, the next app uh, might come as a surprise since I'm a designer. I use uh, Canva quite a lot for uh, the basic things that I do. Uh, I like to use it for, um, I use it a lot for this YouTube channel actually. I use it a lot to like create uh, Instagram stories, uh, posts, um, as well as thumbnails every now and then. And mainly just because it's super easy to share it with people. Everyone kind of knows how to use it. It's not hard to use. And you can create really uh, nice templates. I don't use their own templates. I find that that's where uh, Canva starts to uh, like fall because uh, they're really easy to recognize. We see them everywhere. But if you make your own templates, it can be a really, really useful app. And um, yes, yeah, so it's one of the apps that I use quite a lot. And 
it's just a lot easier to use than other apps like InDesign uh, that we could use. Canva is just simpler to use. And our next app for creativity is Lightroom. I like to take a lot of pictures, I really enjoy photography, and Lightroom on an iPad is great. It's not as like good as on a regular computer, but when you're just making quick changes on the go, it is absolutely great. It's an app that I use a ton, uh, just because it's so easy to use on an iPad. And now, entertainment. Like I said, uh, this isn't going to be the main focus of this video, but the iPad is great for entertainment. and. The apps that I use the most on the iPad, I would say the number one is F1 TV uh, to watch uh, Formula One. Um, I also, of course, use Netflix, YouTube, and I really like um, Kindle as well on the iPad. I do have a real Kindle, a physical one, but on the iPad, it's kind of, it's easy to use, you know, uh, I keep my iPad with me at all times. Uh, so it's a nice app to just use whenever you want to. Oh. And of course, we have to talk about gaming. Uh, mobile gaming on an iPad Pro is really, really nice. I really, really like playing, uh, especially racing games on an iPad is really cool. Uh, it has the right size and it's really nice. You have really nice graphics as well. It's super impressive how powerful these things are. And if you like to play RPGs, uh, it's also a really good device for that. Because like I said, it's actually incredibly powerful. Um, and the new M1s are pretty much as powerful as uh, some Macs that you could buy. They, uh, yeah, it's great for gaming. And of course, you might be wondering, could I use an iPad Pro instead of a computer? Um, that's a hard question to answer, um, just like that, because it really depends to, because uh, it really depends on what it is that you're doing. Uh, if you're a student and you're just like taking notes in class, reviewing documents, uh, reading PDFs and stuff like that, you could probably get away with an iPad. Um, if you're gonna be using it, if you're a bit more of a power user, like you're gonna be editing uh, pictures, uh, video editing, if you're studying something like graphic design, uh, programming or whatever, like something like that, where you're really gonna be using a computer more, uh, the iPad is definitely not gonna be uh, enough. And this is kind of annoying because the device itself is definitely strong enough or powerful enough if you get the Pro models to handle all of these things, but it uses iPad OS and not like Mac OS. So it doesn't have, um, it doesn't allow you to do everything that you could do in a computer. And if you decide to use it sort of like a computer, you'll see pretty quickly that the files app on iPad is not great. Uh, it's nothing like uh, Apple's Finder, which is super useful. Uh, they've of course made it better with uh, time, but it's still not good enough for me to use it uh, to replace a computer. However, when I was in school, I used to carry my iPad around a lot more than my computer because I was mainly just taking notes. Uh, that is when I was in business school, not when I was studying graphic design. Uh, you absolutely need a computer if you're going to do graphic design. But if you're like in a regular kind of course where you're just taking notes, the iPad is definitely good enough. I also really enjoy to use Pocket on the iPad. It's another app that I use to uh, read stuff. I've talked about it in the past all, uh, as well. But Pocket is uh, an app where, let's say you're reading a nice article, you can send it to Pocket and we'll save it there. And once you read your article within Pocket, you will not have any ads. You can highlight stuff and all these highlights can be saved to other apps like Readwise, where you can then send them to Notion, which is what I do. So every time I'm reading an article, I highlight stuff, it gets sent to Notion, and then I can reuse it later. It's especially useful for these videos, uh, but it's just nice to have as well, right? You're reading something interesting, you don't want to forget it, so uh, by hiding it and saving it to Notion. Well, you won't forget it, it's there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I made another video last week on five skills that I want to learn in 2022, and most of them have to do with YouTube, so go check it out if that's something you might be interested in, and otherwise, well, have a great day.